in this series of in-depth but digestible profiles for your favorite brands, you'll learn things about them that you won't learn on other videos. Welcome to the luxury world. Get inspired with us today and tomorrow. There's a strong probability that when you hear the name Omega Sea Master, you immediately picture a diving watch. The Diver 300M, which has appeared in several James Bond films throughout the 1990s, is the most probable model. As a whole, the Seamaster range isn't just one watch. It encompasses everything from extreme dives to dress watches. This collection is worth exploring with so many classic models, stories to tell, and interesting tidbits. The Seamaster is Omega's oldest current collection. Omega's Seamaster has been considered a symbol of the company's 100th anniversary since its first release in 1948. The fact that it is 9 years older than the Speedmaster and other classics in Omega's current lineup enables you to get a sense of the age of the brand as well as its extensive history. The Seamaster was a fashionable watch in the 1940s, but it was clearly designed for the water. The first commercially produced diving watch, Omega Marine, has a rectangular, reversal-like face contained in a waterproof outer casing that seems dressy from our current viewpoint. Omega's Seamaster drew on its diving heritage, although it wasn't exactly a dive watch when it was introduced. However, the very first Seamaster was more than just a dress watch. Omega's extensive expertise in producing timepieces for the British military during World War II contributed to the remarkable durability of the watch. It was able to endure temperature variations ranging from 50 degrees Celsius to negative 40 degrees Celsius thanks to a novel kind of gasket known as an O-ring, which enabled it to obtain a water resistance rating of 60 meters, which was superior to that of most current dress watches. In 1948, this was the appearance of a rough sports watch like the one seen here. The Omega Seamaster as a full-fledged dive watch. 1957 was a pivotal year for Omega, since it was when the Speedmaster collection and the Seamaster 300, the first diving watches we know today, were both released. Despite its name, it was only water-resistant up to 200 meters, which was approximately the limit of what firms were even able to certify at that time. After 10 years, the firm provided the British military with a variant of this timepieces to use in their operations. It's noteworthy that the company now produces a vintage-inspired version of the Seamaster 300. This watch is substantially distinct from the latter, despite having a moniker that is confusingly similar to the Seamaster Diver 300M. A note on vintage Omega Seamasters. The history of Seamaster and the brand's present collections are both quite interesting. But what is the single most impressive aspect of Omega Seamasters? In addition to being very fascinating and easily accessible, vintage models might be an excellent financial investment. When you go through the listings, you will get an idea of how diverse the watches that have carried the Seamaster brand over the years. There have been several sub-collections and variations released over the years. Although vintage, Seamaster diving watches will still be rather pricey. One can often acquire excellent examples of the dressily designed versions mentioned above for a price lower than $1,000. The year 1995 marks the introduction of popular culture into the narrative, at which point the 007 link develops into a significant facet of the Seamaster's character. From that year forward, the fictional super spy James Bond has only worn Omega watches. Throughout his on-screen career, the fictional super spy James Bond has worn a number of timepieces, including Rolex at one point. Omega claims that costume designer Lindy Hemming, who worked on the film GoldenEye, picked the brand because of its long-standing ties with the British military. It would be proper for Bond to wear a Seamaster, as the Royal Navy started utilizing the Seamaster 300 in 1967, and the character is theoretically a Royal Naval Reserve captain. While the Seamaster Diver 300M, which seems to be more modern these days, is the traditional Omega Bond watch, he's also worn the legs of a planet ocean. The firm has also honored the Bond with a slew of limited editions for die-hard 007 collectors. Modern Omega Seamaster Watches 
Everything from the current record holder of the deepest diving watch ever, which is 15,000 meter rated, to heritage-inspired dress models based on the collection's oldest timepieces, is included in the present Seamaster lineup. While we've selected exemplary models from each sub-collection in the gallery below, each offers even more in terms of colors, complexities, and special editions, including the brand's characteristic coaxial escapement. Diver 300M. In 1993, the 007 famous Seamaster Diver 300M watch was released, also known as the Seamaster Professional. Watch collectors of a new age have taken notice of this line's 2018 facelift, which takes it out of the 1990s, with its scalloped bezel, skeletonized hands, and wavy dial design, it's one of the most unique contemporary diving watches around. It has a manual helium release valve at 10 o'clock crown. Planet Ocean The Planet Ocean is the brand's beefed-up hardcore dive watch comparable to the Sea Dweller. In the same way that the Omega Diver 300M is comparable to the Rolex Submariner. The water resistance has been increased to 600 meters, and in addition to being large and thick, the general design is also a little bit more conventional. These are some of the most aggressively designed, modern-looking, and sporty-sized timepieces that Omega offers. The chronograph versions of these watches are even more extreme in these categories. Planet Ocean Ultra Deep For the first time ever, a watch prototype was successfully lowered to the depths of the Mariana Trench in 2019, beating the previous record holder Rolex. Although the commercial version is smaller and not certified for as deep a dive, it's qualified to reach 6 kilometers beneath the ocean's surface. Aquaterra Aquaterra was launched in 2002 and is one of those watches that fall somewhere in between sport and formal attire. It's got a dress watch's profile, but it's got 150 meters of water resistance, an arrow-shaped minute hand, loom, and the outside minutes and seconds track to give it a more macho sports feel. What it ultimately boils down to is adaptability. The traditional 41mm model has a teak-inspired horizontal dial design, while the Aquaterra 38mm variant has a more subdued dial pattern that we like. Omega Seamaster Heritage Models Watches that are based on or inspired by past models are known as reissues or direct inspirations. While perusing the Seamaster Heritage Collection, you got a quick overview of the brand and its many models. Seamaster 300 has all of Omega's dive watches hallmarks, but in a 41mm case with a throwback look and nostalgic feel. Aside from that, there are other colors and material options to choose from when it comes to the newer collection, based on the original 1957 model. Railmaster As part of a trilogy established in 1957, the Railmaster was one of the Speedmaster and Seamaster 300 models that were available. Regarding magnetic resistance watches, Omega's response to the likes of the Rolex Milgauss and the IWC Ingenieur was this model. When compared to the other timepieces on the market, the Railmaster was mainly designed for railroad workers to use. Today's Railmaster has METAS certified movements and silicone balance springs, making it very anti-magnetic. Still, it doesn't make it stand out in the Omega catalog as much as it used to. It sticks out to the nearest approximation in their collection to a field watch. Ploprof The infamously startling Ploprof is a monster. Since the 1970s, when watch companies were vying for the deep-diving hardcore dive watch market, this brand has been known as the Professional Diver Abbreviation. The current Ploprof remake increases the original's water resistance from 600 meters to 1,200 meters. What's going on with that? A spring-loaded crown guard protects the crown located on the left. And what's up with that wacky vertical button over there? A two-handed action, which is to push in order to turn the bezel. Bullhead Another example of the 60s to 70s weirdness, like the Ploprof mentioned earlier. Despite this, it has a cult-like appeal and has been dubbed the Horns Chronograph because of its two 12 o'clock chronograph pushers. A racing chronograph may be added to the Seamaster, showing its versatility, otherwise mostly from the domain of the Speedmaster collection. 
Seamaster 1948. To mark the Seamaster's 70th anniversary in 2018, Omega unveiled this model in its honor. Depending on the model, you might have a little seconds sub-dial or a central seconds dial. Omega is clearly committed to the idea that Seamaster can be more than just a diving watch. Special Editions A few watches in the Seamaster lineup don't cleanly fall into any of the other categories. They are generally manufactured as limited editions. Some, like the type seen here, were designed specifically for the Olympics to serve as the official timekeeper for the event. In contrast, others, like the boutique editions, are as formal as you'll find from the company. There you have your luxury watch video for today. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video, hit the notification bell, and subscribe to our channel. Please forward this video to someone if you believe we have been helpful. You can express your gratitude for the dedication and effort we all put into making this film with just one share. This is the luxury world, and we'll see you next time.